Hello again, it's uh, Alan Macon, the local history tutor for Nosley Face, with a continuing series of short videos on the history of Nosley and Liverpool. Today's short video will look at the history of Castle Street, uh, one of Liverpool's original medieval seven, uh, seven streets. Um, so we can trace this particular street in Liverpool city centre back at least 800 years. Uh, We'll look at the history of why Castle Street is called Castle Street. Surprise, surprise, named after a medieval castle. We'll look at the development of the castle uh, and eventually how it turned into a ruinous estate. Then we'll look at what was on the site of the castle um, after it was knocked down in the uh, Georgian period. Um, that became known as St George's Church, a famous Liverpool city centre church. Uh, that was eventually knocked down and is now represented, the exact site uh, is now represented by Queen Victoria's Monument in Derby Square in Liverpool city centre. So it's one of the most historic sites in the whole of Liverpool and can be traced back over many, many hundreds of years. We'll also look at some maps and some sketches and pictures of Castle Street um, over the last 200 years or so and finish off by looking at uh, Liverpool uh, Castle Street's Sanctuary Stone. So as you can see from the first handout, we've got the castle itself, hence the name Castle Street. This is just purely an artist impression, rather whimsical, of what the castle may have looked like with its turrets, portcullis, um, towers, etc. and moat. So this is purely an artist impression. Um, the records that survive are very patchy. Uh, this is also a map, a conjectural map, basically an educated guess of what Liverpool may have looked like from the castle in its early days in the 1300s. Uh, and there's a mention of the castle and the references. And you look at the original seven streets of Liverpool, uh, Castle Street was one of them, and Castle Fields, and there's the castle itself. So that's what the historians think was in Liverpool many hundreds of years ago when its population was no more than a thousand people. If you move on to the general history of Castle Street and initially the castle, again we'll look at another map. This is a map from 1572, the Elizabethan period. And again, you can see that by then the population had grown a little bit, may have been three or four thousand people. But there's a reference to the pool of Liverpool, where it gets its name from, also known as the lake or the sea lake. And there's a nice uh, illustration of the castle itself. Uh, in, in present day Derby Square, Liverpool city centre. So Liverpool Castle was probably erected under the orders of a gentleman of the name of William de Ferris, who later his descendants would become known as the Earls of Derby, somewhere between, come to the written records, 1232 and 1237. The most detailed medieval account was made in the year 1347, which described the castle as having Similar to what we saw on the picture, four towers, a hall, chamber, chapel, brew house and a bakehouse with a well therein, a certain orchard and a dovecot. It was surrounded by a moat. That's uh, taken from the medieval description in 1347. On only two occasions over many hundreds of years did the castle actually physically come under attack. Uh, once when a band of rebellious tenants of Thomas the Earl of Lancaster mounted unsuccessful assault um, in 1315. Secondly, during the more famous, the English Civil War in the 1640s when the Royalists and the Parliamentarians vied for power. Uh, so that's basically Oliver Cromwell and Charles I in the 1640s. If we move on again, uh, if we move on in terms of the, uh, the castle's history in its uh, in its last days, by the early 1700s, the castle had been become an eyesore and was in ruins. Uh, the hereditary constableship of the castle awarded to the Molyneux family ended in 1701, which basically means the Molyneux became the Earls of Sefton, lived in Croxton Park, and for hundreds of years they were given a special privilege known as the constableship of the castle. They basically didn't own it, but they controlled it for hundreds of years. In 1701, that privilege died out, and the council, the corporation at the time, Liverpool Corporation, wanted to rebuild on the site, and it was such an eyesore. Their answer was to build a beautiful church uh, known as St George's Church, which I'll show you a, a sketch, uh, uh, an artist impression of in a minute. Uh, the new church of St George, designed by Thomas Steers, engineer of the first dock, Liverpool's first ever dock, commercial dock in 1715, he was the, uh, written by the name of Thomas Steers, was constructed on the site of the castle and consecrated in 1734. 
A structural fault in the spire led to the whole steeple becoming totally rebuilt and designed by a gentleman by the name John Foster Jr. and completed in the year 1825. Dwindling congregations led to the demolition of St George's Church in 1899. People uh, were moving out of the city centre and moving to the suburbs. So the congregation dwell uh, became less and less. The present Victorian monument, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute, was erected on the site in 1902. And thousands and thousands of people every day walk past that monument, not re realising some of its historical uh, importance. So I mentioned St George's Church before, so it's on the site of Queen Victoria's Monument. This is a beautiful illustration of the church itself. There was the famous spire, the fair church which had a structural fault, had to be totally uh, knocked down and rebuilt. Uh, the gentleman in the front, this is also known as the, it was called the James Street Market. This is a little market outside the church on Market Day. Uh, as I said, but basically it was a beautiful church, but had to, the spire had to be uh, literally rebuilt because of a structural fault. Uh, if you move on, I'll show you these are two. Again, uh, two modern, relatively modern day photographs. So this is the first one is a very well-known landmark in Liverpool city centre. Thousands upon thousands of people walk past it every day. This is Derby Square and Vic Queen Victoria's monument. There's Queen Victoria herself, surrounded by James Street in the background. Uh, this was the site of the castle for the best part of 500 years. Um, the bottom photograph is a famous photograph taken during after the Blitz of 1941. There's Queen Victoria's uh, monument and surrounding area of Lord Street, Castle Street had largely been flattened by the Blitz and the Luftwaffe of 1941. It's the same area, area uh, but say 80 years ago nearly now. Uh, it's a famous photograph that often appears in the local press, the Liverpool Echo. It also goes on to say John Foster also designed St George's Crens which would become uh, Derby Square, erected around the perimeter, perimeter of Derby Square. Um, so again, I'll show you two uh, sketches of, uh, or yes, the artist impression sketches. One is of Derby, uh, sorry, Castle Street in 1786, the Georgian period. Uh, streets, like all streets, and Liverpool, Liverpool is one of most um, the uh, oldest street, one of the original seven streets, was widened in the late 1700s. And this is an artist impression taken outside Liverpool Town Hall. Must have been literally standing outside at Liverpool Town Hall. He's looking down Castle Street and he's watching the destruction of the old, late medieval, probably Stuart Georgian uh, Castle Street. By then, Liverpool was booming, its population was booming, and the, the merchants, who you can see in the, fo in the foreground, them and their families wanted bigger houses and bigger business premises. So lots and lots of the old Castle Street was knock, knocked down in the 1780s. Um, if you move to the bottom sketch, this is an artist impression of what he called St George's Crescent, which was still in existence in Liverpool in Derby Square, again until it was totally demolished by the Germans in the 1941 Blitz. So this was known as St George's Crescent in 1830. Beautiful crescent, not dissimilar to the crescent you would find in the beautiful city of Bath. Um, so I'd like to continue and come towards the end and talk about uh, a rather strange uh, historical fact. It's known as the Sanctuary Stone to be found in Castle Street, towards the top end of Castle Street, towards the Town Hall. This is the only stone uh, remaining of two to have survived. It was originally marked the boundaries of the old Liverpool fairs. The fairs were, were first held on the 21st of uh, July uh, and 11th November. Uh, between these two stones for 10 days before and after each fair, debtors might walk free from arrest provided they were engaged on lawful business. That's where the name Sanctuary comes in. The privilege the act was, was cancelled by an Act of Parliament in 1690. Uh, six. So, as usual, so that's all about that's all you if you walk past Castle Street today, all you will see is the remains of one of the two stones which mark the boundaries of Liverpool's medieval fairs. So you can still see this today. People walk past it not realising what it is. Um, so as usual, I'd just like to finish off by saying please leave any comments you wish and please please keep in contact with Nosley Face and Nosley Recovery websites for continuing information on any tips to do with mental health and well-being. Thank you.